Welcome to the Teens for Wellness podcast. I'm Cole filling in for Ethan today, and joining me as my co-host is Tate. How you doing, Tate? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm doing pretty good myself. Good. Today's podcast is sponsored by Stand for Kind. Take a stand against bullying in your school and help spread kindness and positivity by visiting www.standforkind.com. Join the Stand for Kind community hosted by Geneva. All it takes is one click and you can connect and make new friends. Video chat and join conversations about the casual to trending topics, mental health and anti-bullying and more. Join the community at www.standforkind.com. Dalai Lama said, Love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. What are your thoughts about that co- quote? Honestly, that, that quote kind of is it is a happy quote to me, you know, uh, it, it's very true, you know, you, uh, without kindness and, you know, uh, without kindness and compassion, you really can't go on. Yeah. Like it hits home for you because everybody needs kindness and it just, it can't just be something that only the superior people have because then the people who feel that they're lower than them will always feel that way, even though we are all equal and we all need kindness in our lives. Yeah, that is that is definitely true. Today's guest shares his views on compassion through the release of his new song, Compassion. This country pop artist has been entering audiences since he could walk. His first film was at the age of six. He has starred in numerous films and television series, including The Last Man with Tim Allen, and he has lent his voice to animated productions such as Ferdinand, Disney Animals, and Tots. Please welcome to the podcast, the very talented Jet Jurgensmeyer. Hey guys, how's it going? It's going pretty good. How about you? Pretty good. I'm excited to be here. We got the good vibes pillow, like I pointed out earlier. Got it. You got to have the good vibes. Always. <laughs> a new segment to our podcast is Quick Questions. It's a way for us to break the ice a bit before we get into the actual interview. What is your favorite personal possession and why? Okay, uh, I I could go with like a device or something like that that we kind of all have to live off of nowadays, which is unfortunate. Uh, honestly, probably a guitar. My guitar back here. Uh, I have a, I have quite a few, but this one's very special to me. It's the first kind of really good guitar that my parents bought me when I was about eleven, I think, something like that, eleven, twelve, and I've been playing it ever since it's definitely has its its bumps and bruises from me hitting it on things which is not very professional but honestly if it doesn't mess up the sound in my opinion each each scratch has a has a has a story behind it so it, that's probably the one thing i can't live without that's that's really cool i think we all have <laughs> something that's like that oh yeah if you had 25 hours in a day what would you do with the extra hour 25 well first of all that throws off everything i mean i'm so used to 24 what what do you oh my goodness i mean i i I think it's very important to hang out with your your family and be with them spend time with them your friends your close friends everybody has has friends but there's you just have that kind of small circle of really good friends that you know are ride or die with you they'll be with you till the end i feel like i feel like that's what i would what i would do with with another another hour in the day I don't know. I, I would really have to think about that, but I think that I think I would spend it with my my friends and family. I think that's what I would do too. Yes, close friends are always important. What aspect Absolutely. of your personality adds the most value to the world? Yeah, I I'm a very positive person. Uh, I don't know if you can tell that by the name of my song, Compassion. Um, <laughs> I'm very positive. I'm always smiling. You know, I. I don't really let things get to me that often, even if they're not the best of things, or if I don't get this job, or if I have a bad show on stage. I mean, it is what it is. Life happens. And you just, you kind of have to take a step back, learn from the mistake you made, or what you think you could have done better, and then just keep moving forward. There's there's no sense in sitting back and complaining or yelling about it or being sad about it. it what's what's done is done. You can't You can't go back in time, unless somebody has a pocket time machine I don't know about in which case you might I might go back and and redo a couple shows on stage where I've messed up a couple songs you know it is what it is (laughs) we all make mistakes but um going along with the topic of your new song uh compassion it was released last Friday um would you mind telling us about it and like the inspiration behind writing it 
So I, I sat down with uh, my two co-writers, uh, Sky Corbin and Stephanie Joyce, and we just kind of started throwing out ideas a- as it is. And we honestly, what's funny is whenever I've, what I've noticed about songwriting is you take the first like 20 minutes just to kind of talk and just catch up and see what they're into, that sort of thing. Just, just talking. And a lot of times that brings up ideas and maybe a melody or somebody might say a, a, a short little sentence and you're like that's a great hook that's awesome and that's really what happened here we were we were just talking and we started talking about the things that are going on in the world and how there's a there's a lot of hate and fighting and things that aren't aren't compassionate and aren't kind and we we ended up talking about compassion and how the world needs more compassion and we were like i think we just i think we just found our hook right there in the title of our song let's run with it and that's that's what we went off of. And I'm I'm very, very proud uh, of how it turned out, because I think it really kind of encapsulates what compassion is. And I hope I think all three of us uh, hope from writing that song that it kind of opens people's eyes and minds uh, to how they should treat others and how they are treating others and kind of look at how they're treating others and how they could should change that or how they can maybe help uh, other people by being compassionate. That's awesome. Yes, it is. There is a really profound line in the song that says, you think by now we would have learned compassion. In your mind, why hasn't the world learned compassion and what is holding us back? I feel like that's the million dollar question, to be honest with you, because in my eyes, it's it's very simple. I'm I'm a very kind person. I would like to think I would like to think that my friends would realize that I'm kind of the life of the party in my friend groups. I'm the dork. I'm the I'm the class clown, if you will. Even though I'm homeschooled and an only child, don't look into that. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of I'm the outgoing one of my friend groups, and I would like to think that I'm a very compassionate person. And nothing, like I said, nothing really gets to me. And I think the people that don't live that way, I think it's just the way that we're wired as humans. I think it's the way God designed us for a reason. Um, I, it's not my place to try to figure out why he does the things he does, but he designed us that way for a reason. So I'll just roll with it. I think that was a show. That's a show on Disney. Just roll with it. Something like that, that there you go. Just roll with it. Um, I think people do need to take a step back every now and again and realize how they, how they are as a person, how they treat others and how they can help others by being kind, being compassionate trying to spread that message. And that's, that's really why Sky, Stephanie, and I wrote this song was to try and, like I said, open people's minds and eyes and kind of look at themselves and look at the world around them. But um, I, I think the world hasn't learned compassion because we almost tend to overrun it. You know, we, we're so kind that by being so kind, we, we start to be unkind because we get so um, like comfortable with the people we're around. And then yeah. we get so comfortable that we tend to treat them not kind. You know, um, we don't we don't show them compassion because we feel like we're joking. But you know, some people uh, take that seriously, and so it really absolutely. Is- and don't get me wrong. It like I said earlier. You know, what I would do with that one extra hour in the day is probably spend it with my friends and family, my very close friends. And you're always going to joke with your friends, and people are always going to be people and make fun of others and. I've definitely been on the end of receiving some some jokes, but you know, like they're at the end of the day, they're still my family. They're still my close friends are like my family, and so I mean, it's all just kind of about taking it with a grain of salt and realizing that, like I said, people are going to be people, and they're going to. It's the way that they're wired. It's the way that people just we just think as as humans, I guess. Yes, going along with that, just like how people, like they think about negative things in their life and they will try to find and focus on the negative things that other people have in their lives and they make sure that those people know that. And when they, uh, like, they don't take a step back to figure that um, out and they just like to focus on the bad in other people's lives and that helps them feel better, even though that's not that truly yes help them feel to me it's like why why worry why why are you worrying about the the things that this person's going through worry about yourself like take a step back worry about yourself 
get yourself in the right mindset and yourself in that that place that you need to be in and then help others. You don't have to try to if you if you rush into things and try to help others, you're really not helping them because you rushed into it and you're not in the place that you're trying to get somebody else into. Yes. Yeah, I can, I can agree with that. Going along with like um, the topic of compassion, would you mind sharing with us like a personal experience in your life when you were shown compassion or you saw others show compassion? Honestly, all the time. I, I think that that's kind of what keeps us going in the world is when we do see those, those little, those little tidbits of people being kind and compassion. Love looking those videos up on like YouTube and watching people being kind and random acts of kindness, things like that. Uh, it happens on set a lot when I've seen it because I've been acting since I was four years old. And a lot of times people that have been in the industry a long time don't take kids on set seriously. I've been acting for 12 years. I not, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I, I do know what I'm doing when I'm on set. Uh, I have the experience. So what's amazing and when I see compassion in a sense is when people are kind to me on set and treat me with, with respect. And I, I try to do that to everybody. I'm, I'm very interested in behind the scenes of films and TV shows and animation. And if it wasn't for those people that are behind the scenes, the show or movie would not be getting made because I am not the person that should be doing the set decoration. As you can tell, I have three pictures and a pillow up behind me. I'm not exactly the greatest person to set up a room. And honestly, that was my mom's idea for setting up those pictures. So it wasn't even me. So if it wasn't for those people, these my music would not be getting made for the musicians that play on it. My producer, Butch. Dan, who gets all the musicians there, Mike, who does all the editing. I mean, it, nothing would be happening if I didn't have this team behind me that showed me compassion by giving me a chance at a young age and treating me with respect. And I, I try every day to to treat them with the same amount of respect. I think we should all try to treat people with the amount of respect we want to be treated with. Yes, absolutely. Like there you it's kind of the golden rule. You reap what you sow. If if you're nice to people, people will be nice to you. And I actually heard Ed Sheeran uh, say that. I've, I've been able to meet Ed Sheeran. He is a musician that I've looked up to for a very long time. I actually have a looping uh, pedal thing down here because of him. I, I, love, I love him as a musician. And I got to meet him, one of the nicest people I've ever met. And that's his philosophy. You, you reap what you sow. And you never see anybody being insanely famous or having a lot of friends that is not nice. People that are nice, like Ed Sheeran, look at where he is in the world. He's one of the biggest musicians in the world and his music will live on well past when he stops releasing songs. And that's just kind of the way that I try to live my life. And I think a lot of people need to. Yes. I think like Ed Sheeran is a great example of showing compassion. You know, most of his songs are about being nice to people and showing compassion. And that's what I really like about Ed Sheeran is that he, he, he doesn't care what people think of him as long as he's nice to every, everybody. He makes Absolutely. him happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that. Yes. There you go. On the line of showing compassion to others, how can teens today be more compassionate not only to each other but also to themselves? I think we've really touched on it. Uh, just like we just said, you reap what you sow. Just try, try to not overreact on things. I think that's one thing that we as teenagers tend to do is we overreact or, oh my gosh, they did this. And now the world's ending when it's not really, we're, we're in high school or middle school, however old you are, like the world isn't ending. We're fine. It's just not overreacting, taking a step back, realizing that you are overreacting and trying to treat people with the same amount of kindness and respect that you want to be treated with. Like, like we've been saying, that's, that's really, I feel like that's the best way to say it is treat people how you want to be treated. Yeah. I, I think that really is the best way to, to put it. And I, I think, I think you'll actually notice that people start treating you better when you start treating others better because people, people do notice contrary to popular belief. People do notice when you are a good person and they can tell when you're not. And you'll notice once you start being nice to people, people are nice to you. People you never thought were, were really like 
liked you or would ever be friends with you or talk to you. Oh, wow. They're talking to me now. I thought they had something against me. I guess not. I guess I just wasn't that great of a person and that kind of open to talk to. Yeah, I, I think that's, a, that's very true. In my opinion, it's, it's like we've been saying where it's take a, take a step back, kind of look at yourself. Uh, maybe, maybe pray if, if you're religious, I, I personally am Catholic. Uh, just kind of take that step back and s- have have people that that you know are close with you or that you know you can talk to if you're going through something uh it, you don't have to have an abundance of friends to try to be happy or to make yourself feel better you just need to have one person honestly to talk to um i'm fortunate i have both my parents uh i do have a couple friends that i can talk to about whatever it is i'm going through and even if you don't like i said you can pray you may not get a response but in my belief, somebody is there listening to you. So it's all about kind of having at least just one person that you know you can talk to. It could be somebody that you, you play video games with on the weekend that you've never met in person, but you feel like you know everything about them. You know what I mean? It's just having somebody even like that that you can just be like, man, this is what I'm going through. I just need to spill spill my guts out to somebody and have them help you clean it up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's actually really nice. I, I uh, you know, me personally, I have people that you know I can talk to, and even if it's just the littlest thing, they'll always listen. You know, even if it's just something I need to get off my chest, or if it's a really big Absolutely. thing, or like even if I'm having a bad day, I'll go talk to them. Just because you know, it feels like they're almost helping you through that bad portion that you're going through. You know, you you oh, yeah. feel like you're splitting that weight that's put on your shoulders. Absolutely. And that's, that's what, that's like when you have that person that you can call your best friend, you're like, my business is your business. Your business is my business. All right. We're here for each other. And that's, that's what I try to be for my friends. And I know that I have some friends that are that way for me. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to teens who are experiencing either bullying, uh, thoughts of depression or suicidal, um, ideas or, any, anything along those sort of lines? Well, I know I know that this is not going to be a popular thing, but it really does help to talk to somebody. It really, really does. Like we've, like we've just been saying. I feel like that's all I've been saying, but it's true. We've, we've been touching on things before we even bring them up the topic. It really is having somebody to talk to. And again, not overreacting. Take a step back. Think about what you're doing realize that this is temporary. This is not something that I'm going to be dealing with the rest of my life. I'm overreacting. This is not the end of the world. I can get through this. Sometimes it's it's hard to be truthful and it's hard to make it through that portion. I've dealt with it. Everybody's dealt with it. But it is about just putting one foot in front of the other and keeping on moving forward. Yeah, and, and going back to like what you said, you know, um, having that person's really nice and like what i said um it, it almost feels like you're splitting that pressure in half you know absolutely and, and every time you talk to them you know it's just in half in half and then slowly you start to feel um happy again you know you start to get those emotions back that you want instead of and then a, a week later you'll go what was what was i upset about last week I can't even remember. Oh man, I I didn't even text you about it. I mentioned it to you like three times and now it's over. Like you realize that's when you realize I was overreacting. I'm glad I took that step back and realized. Yeah. You just have to make sure like if you really are like if you really feel like you are struggling, you need to make sure that you like talk to somebody and like don't be afraid to share your true feelings with someone because Um, what you're going through, what you feel you're going through is real. And like, don't be afraid to like have like to think that someone will judge you for your feelings because no one will judge you for your true feelings and how like what you're going through because uh, most often than not, they know what you're going through so they can relate and they are here to help you. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's exactly, that's the best way to put it. I couldn't have said it better myself. (laughs) <laughs> and, and and everybody's feelings is valid, you know. Nobody has invalid feelings. Everybody has v- very very valid feelings. Absolutely. Even even if that person seems very tough, 
like I said, I'm a very positive person. You will most likely always see me smiling. I still have feelings and I still have been through everything that we've talked about because I'm human, <laughs> but good vibes, only good vibes behind us. <laughs> We'd like to thank the very talented Jet Jergensmeyer for sharing with us the inspiration behind his new song, Compassion, and his thoughts on how we as teens can be more compassionate. Listen and download his song, Compassion, on all streaming platforms. Don't forget to check out the music video for the song dropping in a couple of weeks. You can follow Jet Jergensmeyer on Instagram at Jet Jergensmeyer. There is a real need for compassion in our world today. Not just the compassion that we show to those around us, but we also need to be compassionate to ourselves. If you are struggling with compassion for yourself, ask for help. And if you are having thoughts of suicide, please speak up and ask for help. You are not alone. Call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. Great podcast today. Thank you again to Jed Jergensmeyer. Special thanks to my co-host, Tate. And of course, a huge thank you to everyone for listening to this episode of the Teens for Wellness podcast. And remember, you matter. Thank you.